that you would open up this word to us. God, that you would speak to each and every heart that that they need to hear. Lord, take this word, Lord, and apply it in the places that it needs to be applied. Open our understanding that we could receive it and do with it what you would have us to do with it. Lord, that we could grow and become more of that that you would have us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I may have said something similar to this before, but I often ask myself, why does God send the messages he sends? And there's really only one answer, because somebody needs it. Somebody needs to hear it. And, you know, a lot of time it's easy when we're sitting in the pew and we're listening to a message, especially if it's well-known scripture, it's easy to kind of get a little lackadaisy people think, well, I know all that scripture and I know this and I know that, and miss the point that God wants you to have. You know, in the middle of the most familiar scripture, God can make one little point for you. And if you're not listening, you're going to miss that. So, whenever we hear the word of God, we need to tune in our spiritual ears and listen for what it is that God is speaking to us. In the book of Luke, chapter 15, beginning at verse 11. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. God has given me a couple points that I want to make here. And as I started out saying, why does God send when he sends when he sends it? Because somebody needs it. A um, couple points. Some of us going to be real on the point for just a, a minute or two, and then we're going to move on. Uh, the first thing that God put on my mind when I read this was, I have talked to people who have used this scripture to say that you can never lose your salvation. I've talked to people who said this scripture backs eternal security because even when that boy was out there, he was still the son. But what did the father say? My son was dead. We are dead when we are in trespasses and sins. Uh, let's start at the beginning. The father had two sons. 
Everybody probably knows without me explaining to you what this parable is all about. Who is the father? And who are his children? We are. He had two sons. Now, in order for us to be a son or daughter or a child of God, you have to be born again. And so if we take this parable and look at it, he had two sons. They were both his sons. And they came to him. Um, one came and said, I want what's mine. And he got what was his, and he left. And when he went out there and wasted everything that he had, and, and eventually... And we'll talk about this a little more later. He came back. But here's the point I want to make on this before I move to the next point. Uh, if anybody tells you that this uh, backs up eternal security, listen to what the father said. He said, my son was dead. But now he's alive again. He was lost. But now he's found. When he was out, he was dead. It was when he came back to the father and repented that he was alive again. So, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And why? You ask God. Um, he put that on my heart, so i got to share it with you. Uh, the second thing uh, uh, that God has put on my heart is this. You may be a Christian, and you may go, and you may dabble around a little bit here and a little bit there in the world, but you've got to be careful when you begin to do that, because as a child of God, God has blessed you with certain things. God has equipped you with certain things. Uh, God has done certain things for you, but I'm going to tell you, when you go out there and you think you can just do anything and everything because you're saved and it's all right, uh, the world will begin to drain that from you. Uh, that younger son took everything he had and he went into the world and it wasn't too long till the world took everything that he had away from him and he was left with nothing and what did he do he hooked up with a citizen of that country he made friends with a citizen of that country and we got to be careful as children of God that we don't go out here and begin to hook up with people of the world and start to fall into the things they're doing and the ways they're acting and the places they're going and all that kind of stuff because if we do that it's not going to be too long that the things that God has instilled in us are going to begin to be drained away and what are we going to have in its place, the hus that the swine did eat. I'm going to tell you something. You can't go around empty. And the things of God will not last in you when you're in the world. And if you're in the world, uh, things of God are going to begin to drain from you. And I'm going to uh, tell you this again because I want you to get it. This vessel will never be empty. Because if the things of God are not in here, the things of Satan and the world will take that place. That's right. That's right. When one goes out, the other comes in. And it's going to happen, whether you think you're a good person or you're a strong person or whatever. And God has just kind of given me this uh, to give you a warning to take heed and be careful just how much of the world you allow yourself to go out there and begin to enjoy. Now, I'm not saying uh, that you can't do anything. Uh, you got to be in your prayer closet all the time. you got to become a monk and go lock yourself in the attic and, and don't have any evil influences and this. I'm not saying that. Uh, what I'm saying is just be careful how much of the world you begin to let entice you and and bring you into things and places uh, that you should not be. Listen, I, I, we need to stop and understand everything uh, that you come in contact with, everything that you hear, everything that you see becomes a part of you. Like it or not, that's the way this mind is made. That's the way this brain is developed. Everything you've ever seen or heard is in there somewhere. So when you go out there and you're mixing in the world and hearing things you are not to hear, seeing things you are not to see, uh, doing things you are not to do, it becomes a part of you. And as I said, it begins to drain uh, the things of God from you. And as the things of God drain from you, uh, and they're gonna, you're going to be filled with the things of the world. You're going to be filled with things of the flesh. You're going to be filled with things of the devil. Uh, just like this young man was. Now listen. Uh, he had the two sons. The younger came to him. And he said, you know, I want what's mine. And he gave it to him. And he took his journey into a far country. And he wasted everything that he had. And we got up to this point. And after he had done that, he joined himself to a citizen of that country. And sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And I want to just make my point again and then move on from that point. When you begin to lose the things of God. And listen, Christian. If you've been a Christian very long, you may have experienced this. Did you ever feel at a point in your Christian life where you were on fire? Mm -hmm. But it begins to go like this. 
That's what the world will do to you. That's what uh, the flesh will do to you. That's what Satan will do to you. And listen, you may not have ever looked at this that way, but that's what happened to uh, that man. He went out there with a lot. He went out there with his whole inheritance. But it was all drained. And what ended up taking its place? He was filled with the husk that the swine didn't eat. That's what he ended up being filled with. That's what he ended up with. And it was because he began to make friends of the world. And we have to be careful about that. And I'm going to leave that right there because that's all God has told me to say on that. Uh, but then we go on and at some point he came to himself. He stopped. He realized where he was. He realized what he had walked away from. He realized what was available back where he came from. And I want to tell you this this morning. Uh, God is always listening. We have, we have the account of the father saw him come at a, a long ways off. So you get from that that he must be watching for any of his children that go out there and mess up. If you go out there and you mess up and you make a mistake, and I've had people ask me, how do I know God's going to keep forgiving me? How do I know God's going to... He's always looking for you to come back. Uh, listen, think about this. This young man did something pretty rotten and horrible. Especially in this culture, if you understand the culture, we're not going to get into all that. But this was a terrible thing to take what he, his father had and just take it all out there and waste it. As we find out later what the older one said on oh, harlots and riotous living and, and all this kind of stuff. This was a horrible thing that he had done. He, he took what his father had worked all his life for it. He took it. He turned his back on his father and he just walked away. Uh, but listen, uh, we can infer from reading this that the father was watching for him to come back. He was always watching for him to come back. And when he saw him come back, he ran to him and because he wanted him back that much. Uh, I, I just want to tell you this. God is a loving God. God is a forgiving God. There's only one unpardonable sin that the Bible talks about. Uh, the Bible says, I would that you sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, which is Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh, don't let Satan get you and get into your head and make you begin to think, uh, well, I messed up so many times, God ain't going to forgive me. I did this and I did that and, and whatever else that you may get in your mind. Uh, he will forgive you. He is watching for you. He wants you to come back. Uh, he was waiting for you to come back. And just like the father here did, uh, when that young man realized, uh, and I'm just putting this in my words, I blew it. I messed up. I walked away from the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, and I, I remember how it was when I was there. Uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to ask for forgiveness. And I'm going to ask. You don't even have to give me what I once had. Just just let me be a part of this. Just let me be as one of your servants. And he was waiting for him and watching for him. And we can do that with God. I know I say this often and many times. God don't put these things in the Bible just because they're good stories. They're to teach us and tell us things. And again, uh, why this... These points that God has given me, why to those that are sitting here, God knows somebody needs to know this. Somebody needs to hear this. Maybe you messed up. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe you did something uh, this week or the week before or whatever, uh, and it's haunting you and it's bothering you, and you're wondering, can God really forgive me for that? Yeah, he can. Will God really forgive me for that? Yeah, he will. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He said, I would that you sin not, but if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. And if we come to him and we are truly repentant and we truly realize what we've done, he will forgive. <coughs> when the son came back and he said, I'm not even worthy anymore. Uh, just make me as one of your servants. But what did the father do? He took him in. He kissed him. He put the robe on him. He put the ring on him. He put the shoes on him. They killed the fatted calf. They celebrated. That's how our father is. That's how God is. God wants us to have that assurance uh, that when we realize that we have sinned, when we come to ourselves as, as it said this young man, and when we realize we have committed a transgression against God, and we realize that, and it brings conviction on us, we can go back to the Father.
That's that point, and I'm done with that. And one more point I want to make you, I want you to hear this. In the beginning of this, it says, And younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. He didn't just give to the younger. Listen to what it says. He divided unto them his living. It didn't say he just gave the younger his and said, okay, now go. When the younger came and asked for it, it says he divided unto them his living. So, um... He had two sons. The younger came and said, I want my inheritance and I'm going to go. So the father divided unto both of his sons what he had. So as a son, they both got what the father had for them. They both got their inheritance. They both got these gifts from the father. And I want you to just think about this a minute. As a child of God, God doesn't like this one better than that one. That's right. God doesn't give more to this one than he does to that one. Mm -hmm. He divides among his children equally and evenly. When he came and said, give me my living, he divided unto them. Yeah, I said when we came back to pray for Carla, healing is yours. Because that's one of the, that's your inheritance. That's one of the gifts, and there are many, many, many more. And they're just as much yours as they are a preacher's. They're just as much yours as they are a deacon's. They're just as much yours as they are a teacher's. Every child of God gets these things. And we could go throughout the Bible, but we don't have time to get into all this. You could read where it says he took, led captivity captive and did what? Gave gifts. And you can go on and read other places. Every child of God receives these gifts and they're yours. But here's the problem. A lot of us don't take advantage of them. A lot of us don't use them. A lot of us don't do anything with them. These things are ours. They said that the younger came to him and said, I want my inheritance. And he divided unto them his living. And, and we've already been through the whole rest of the story. He went out and he wasted it. And he came to himself and he went back and he received forgiveness. And the father killed the fatted calf. Now listen here, beginning at verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harvest, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And I want to stop there for just a minute, and I want to back up uh, to the beginning of the story. He said, when the younger came and asked for an inheritance, he said he divided them to them. His living. Uh, this guy got his his head. He got his gifts. He got his inheritance. Now listen, when the one comes back and he sees how much celebration there is and what this other one's getting, it says that he gets mad and he wouldn't go in. Now, I don't know who this applies to and don't apply to. I want you to think about this. Did you ever get jealous or wonder why God blesses somebody more than he blesses you? Or, or how the Spirit will move on somebody, but it doesn't move on you? Or how they get this and they get... And I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about spiritual things. Did you ever think to yourself, I'd like to be as spiritual as they are. I'd like to experience some of the things they experience. Listen, every one of us has access to those things. It is up to us. But we just have to access them. Uh, a lot of times uh, we see people who go through their whole Christian life and you never see much uh, of anything out of them or uh, whatever. And then you see some who have access it seems like to all the good things of God. Whether that be healing, whether that be joy, whether that be peace, whatever it is, it seems like they have it. But listen, that was given to you too. And the reason you're not manifesting it is because you haven't realized that it was given to you. Listen, at the beginning of this thing, he told them, I, he divided it among 